Jeremy Lastman here with a spontaneous 30 minute container. Let's see where the energy wants to flow today. It's so funny to consider the emotional connection to an audience when I recollect the past feelings of hyper-criticism and self-judgment, low self-esteem that I used to have, where to even give myself permission to emotionally give myself allowance to know or see or feel that I have fans or people that would enjoy to simply see me speak in this, in that past low self-esteem, self-conscious paradigm that wasn't even allowed to be considered. And so today, taking a very fresh and spontaneous emotional read of all of my various social media channels, and followers, fans, people that I consider friends, the dividing wall that used to be there. Now I'm having fun right now feeling that people are actually interested. Uh, and it feels almost foreign. because it was such a off limits uh, belief or or adequacy to give myself to flow in connection with an audience when there is no critic, perfectionist, people pleaser tearing down the show, tearing down the ideas, 
tearing down the creativity of expression and communication and, and pleasure of interacting digitally, virtually with an audience is a whole new, it feels like a whole new world to explore, especially given right now feeling the contrast of that old operating system that was all about survival and not putting yourself out there, not esteeming and worthing, worthinessing my passion uh, on any level. There was so much negativity in that old operating system that I couldn't allow myself to see an audience in front of me, even if the numbers said so, even if the viewers said so, there was that block that didn't allow it to come in to the picture because there was so much negativity and resistance fighting the possibility that I could be loved and that I could love myself the same way that you see entertainers and performers receive the praise, acclaim, validation, all that stuff had to be withheld because of that inadequacy, that insecurity, that inability to feel like I was deserving of attention and love. Because quite, quite frankly, looking back in hindsight, I can see how much that old operating system propelled that fear in such a neurotic way as to puzzle complexity of that's just the way it is, just off limits, unchallengeable, and it's always going to be at a distance and it's never going to be enough. And it feels fascinating to explore this because when I get to the desire, when I get to the passion and the creativity of simple communication. I don't have an agenda right now. I am just simply spontaneously expressing myself. And I feel that desire to really be open to reaching my audience. An audience that I've never truly truly, deeply have established a connection with, to be very, very honest. And when I give myself pause to feel, yeah, on the surface, there has been interaction comments, likes, followers, subscribe, all the jazz of the numbers and, and the surface of like fans and what that means. But if I'm honest with myself and vulnerable, I've never truly felt the 
full flowing, loving, and like conversational connection with an audience. It was either too nebulous of, I don't know who the hell I'm speaking to, no clue, could be anyone from strangers to acquaintances to friends, like the, the nebulous overthinking of not knowing who I'm talking to, clouding the ability to talk and communicate. That's one thing. And the other thing, when I really land in this and, and feel the emotional release of permission to enjoy rather than ignore there is a a new clarity that no it doesn't in the overthinking land it doesn't matter really who i'm talking to it's more the human presence that I see you. And I want to be seen. And that brings up a whole host of growing up and falling in love with being invisible to finally say that here feels monumental because it's like I'm ready to accept the maybe it's responsibility but that doesn't quite feel like the most poignant readiness. But maybe that's what it is, is the emotional readiness to be seen to open myself up to the whole polarity that the people pleaser and the perfectionist would avoid at all costs on the negative end of the spectrum of saying things and being judged for it saying things and being ridiculed for it, being shamed for it, being hated for it. When all those things are, are covering up the communication, it makes experimenting and doing this uh, an insurmountable, difficult approach to try. And that's, that's really the, the practice here is now that I feel this excitement to actually talk to an audience rather than talk at a distance from astronaut space and, 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 uh, 
unreachable. <laughs> it's like I can finally confidently be here on earth and not have all that fear and negativity that the survival and protection and self-conscious guarding uh, of not wanting to get hurt, not wanting to be hated, all those things that I'm saying are no longer the same factors that they were before. Now there is a a readiness and a, and a fearlessness that it's inevitable that that stuff is going to happen, but the perfectionist doesn't need to ninja avoid those situations like there was from that fear. And there is now that that fear and negativity has been, I like to say, subtracted. I can feel that like bubbling pride to talk more about some of my ideas, to share more of my art, to put myself out there in new and uncomfortable ways. And I feel because today I'm listening to what is most alive and feeling the, the excitement and the passion uh, for, for what is, is current, what is the, the currency of, of uh, today and my days? And I, I want to talk about And I can feel the, the zestiness here to put boof, words to space. On this level of communication to, to directly to you. <laughs> which is totally, it feels totally different than anything I've ever uh, done before. And that is to, to, to speak about my invention. <sighs> because it is through my invention of imagination technology that I was able to consciously evolve from everything that I, we can cosmically uh, laugh and call it a preface up until now. It was a story, but looking at it from this vantage point, we can, we can laugh at myself and say preface. But to, to truly paint this story that survival of the fittest and, and everything that I was talking about that that withheld from my confidence, my courage, my creativity, and the, my invention of imagination technology that is
a new operating system to replace it. There was something that came up around seeing some of my older videos and the people pleaser skirted around the communication confidence to always give whoever's listening or watching the video the full permission to make it however you want it it you tell you say what it is i can give you all the options but you say what it is and i saw myself skirting around the actual communication the confidence in my invention to claim what it is just to me and that is an operating system but I was getting fancy and, and uh, again, trying to allow it to be anything for anybody and, and not try to say what it was to someone who didn't believe, like all that mess versus really just claiming what it is and standing behind this invention and not tearing down the, the communication uh, and diluting the the power and potential of what it was, what it became, and, and what it is today. Because when we say operating system, it's because I, in the invention and the time and attention and attention to detail and the elegance that I was striving for, was something that could get to that core architectural level of a human being, first just me, that completely upgrades, leapfrogs, everything holding back the performance of the human species on, multi, on a multi-dimensional level. Because if you see what I see here, where survival of the fittest as the old operating system that came from natural selection and fear-based senses and, and survival-based pressures, All we've been doing is adding intelligence and programming and information and knowledge and software programs on top of it. And it just became more and more neurotic. And I was that. The representation of intelligence and intellect plus fear. And that ex chaotic rat's nest of neurotic overthinking and high sensitivity can seem I call it a pain palace, can seem like an insurmountable worldview. And especially if you're unconscious, is what it is, is reality, is life. But I wanted to challenge that. I wanted to disrupt that. I wanted to find a solution that wasn't just fixing shit or adding information 
to an old ass computer. Cause it doesn't handle all this new intelligence all that well. That's why there is so much fear and negativity in the climate of the world is because we're still using this animal human operating system that was designed for something that only had five senses and then started to get new features but is still running on old ass shit. So imagination technology, the invention that I am bringing to the world and sharing with you is a new architecture to run as a human. And it's designed to be universal. It's not information, it's imagination technology. It is more of how the body, mind, spirit naturally exists with nothing artificial or neurotic on top of it, dragging down the performance and the processing power and the capabilities and the superpowers of where we could go as a species when we're no longer externally bound by natural selection, but we are active participants in conscious evolution. That's the game changer. And that's why we need a new operating system. And that's why I invented imagination technology. And that's where we're at today. And it's funny when we mention natural because I truly, and you could believe it or not, truly did not have an agenda for this uh, little excursion that we've had today. And I'm terribly poor <laughs> at signing off videos, but naturally, and I feel <laughs> all the, the hilarious uh, commentary from the from the uh, from the stands of oh now he's going to get into marketing and promotion territory that must have been his plan all along believe it if you won't whatever I hope you got something out of this but I will. Finish this video by saying that we are doing a beta test for iSelf 1.0. This has come from 10 years of R&D with this invention of imagination technology, this operating system, and it is in its, uh, I'm not going to say final form because it is evolving, but this is the 1.0 release that we are beta testing of how we are delivering this operating system. And we are already seeing stellar results so far of how efficient and effective this operating system upgrade process, this leveling up uh, can be. And so we only have uh, eight more slots left in this beta, maybe six by next week. So if you're interested, I'm going to put a link below. I didn't plan this. I promise I didn't plan this. Believe it or not. But this is how I'm signing off because I am no longer ashamed to market, to promote, to sell this invention that I believe in, that I know is, and I've heard from customers, is the best in the universe. Imagine, I'm quoting a testimonial from one of our customers. Imagination technology is the best in the universe. Doesn't even need a qualifier. That's how effing cool it is. So if that speaks to you, reach out. Let's start a conversation. And until next time, I'll see you in the next video.